journey to extend a warm welcome to the giant of giants, Dr. Watson. So when I was uh, asked to, uh, to give the talk before uh, Ken of Seneca, uh, I thought this is just going to be a group of old retired men. <laughs> <laughs> so I really didn't uh, anticipate young faces uh, in this audience. And uh, I thought that uh, uh, for people whose you know, scientific career was coming to an end, I would write you know, sort of how I view my career is it's sort of coming to. Uh, and uh, I've written two, or well, actually three autobiographical books. Uh, and the, and the first was The Double Helix, which was just uh, 18 months out of my life when, uh, uh, from meeting Francis Crick to uh, finding The Double Helix. Then I wrote a second book, um, which ex said what happened immediately after the double helix. And their lives were somewhat dominated by the very eccentric but highly original uh, Russian physicist George Gamow. And I called the book uh, Genes, Girls, and Gamow. And that was sort of the story of the pursuit of the uh, early days pursuing the genetic code. And uh, that book sort of ended sadly because uh, I was pursuing a girl and she married someone else. So, so <laughs> uh, which was very lucky because, you know, uh, uh, I married someone, you know, probably more appropriate. <laughs> uh, and then I more recently wrote the book Avoid Boring People, uh, which annoyed a lot of people, uh, uh, because the title sounds rather nasty, uh, you know, avoid dull people. But boring has two meanings, uh, it's a verb or an adjective. And so the second meaning is that I shouldn't bore you now. <laughs> so when you're young, you should try and uh, uh, avoid uh, dull people because you won't learn from them. And then when you're older, you should try and not be a bore yourself. Uh, so I, that's how I called the title. It's really the double meaning that let me call it. Uh, it looks back on my life, which uh, certainly has been much more successful than anyone ever anticipated. Uh, when I uh, 
Oh, so about 25 years ago. I still remember it was a big fundraiser of the University of Chicago, the Rockefeller Center. And one of the students who I was in class came up to me and said, no one expected you to be successful. <laughs> and, you know, I, it turned out to be the, you know, most successful. My class was very small. And, uh, because uh, at least when I was young, I never was an insider. Yeah, I was never a pop girl. <laughs> never had many friends. So I was uh, largely observing people. Yeah. No one wanted to hear what I said because I really didn't have much to say. <laughs> and uh, nor did the people who were doing most of the talking, but that's, you know, what... Uh, uh, but I was bored by people saying nothing, you know, something not worth saying. Um, so I, in Avoid Boring People, I have about, it's 15 chapters of different phases of my life. Uh, sort of, at the end of each chapter, I put down rules uh, for why I was successful. Uh, not that I had rules when I went through anything, but when I look back, I thought, well, why did I succeed and other people not succeed? And uh, so if you look at my childhood, what was probably the best thing in my childhood? Uh, uh, sort of, you know, following my father and absolutely rejecting religion. <laughs> Just, I won't say what I think about it. But <laughs> essentially, you know, it's sort of, you know, there's something up in the sky that gives rules for human behavior and punishes you if you don't behave. And so you pray to, and it all sounds to I me mean, nonsense. There's no reason there should be anything up in the sky. Okay. So uh, at a very early age, uh, you know, I decided that the, uh, just to only accept truths uh, for which there's evidence. And so uh, there's sort of three sorts of uh, truths. Uh, there's religious truth, there's philosophical truth, you know, that you, you get by thing, and then there's scientific truth, which, you know, comes from observation and experience. So I just want observation and experience, and experiments. So that was probably the most important thing that, uh, you know, there were other things such as, you know, Republicans are bad people, which, you know, <laughs> you know, a fairly good rule. <laughs> you know, not true always, but certainly today, oh God, are they awful. You know, they're completely rejecting knowledge. And, and that's what scares me, you know, uh, the uh, Republicans in Congress. No respect for knowledge. Okay. So it was, uh, I was brought up to respect knowledge. Okay. Then I got to the university, and uh, the important thing about the University of Chicago, and uh, was that the only thing that really mattered was thinking. Didn't matter what you look like, anything. It's how well you could think. And so uh, you can teach thinking, and they do the Chicago, so you know, lots of philosophy. I never did very well in it. But, you know, it was definitions of words and things like that, which, you know, and you never seemed to catch on. And, uh, but it was all devoted to trying to be, you know, start with premises, come to a conclusion. And of course, you know, you can't come to the conclusion unless your facts are good. So I'm not rejecting facts, but you've got to, you know, they, they aren't the end. Uh, the main thing is how you 